Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, where we're going to be learning things using video games, we're going to answer a really simple question. What would actually happen if you were to combine all of the moons in our solar system into one? How big would it get? And what would be the total mass and also total size of this actual moon? Would it be bigger than planets? Let's find out. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is actually Jupiter with its like 67-ish moons that we've discovered so far. There's probably some more that we haven't found yet, but this is essentially what it looks like and how large this particular system is. This right there is Saturn with its 60 or 57 moons. And um, every, uh, almost every planet um, in our solar system has a few moons. Uh, the only two planets that don't have any are Venus and Mercury. And um, I always wondered, so because they're so different in size and because they're so different in mass, what would actually happen if you were to combine all of them? Now, there's so many moons out there and it's really, really hard to remember all of their names. And I'm pretty sure, um, I don't actually think of anyone who knows all of them by heart. Pretty sure it's, it'd be really hard to remember all of them. But um, nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that because of their difference in size, which I'll show you in a second, and because of their difference in mass, um, it'd be really interesting to see how big they are all together. In other words, if you were to exclude all of the planets um, and obviously the sun from our solar system, what would actually be the total mass of these objects? So uh, this is Mercury right here. So starting from Ganymede down to Titan, um, Europa, Callisto and so on, if you were to combine all of these little rocks all together, how big would you get of an, uh, an object? How, how massive would it be? So you know what? Take a guess. What do you think? Before I actually do it, uh, you know, imagine what would it be like? Would it be bigger than Venus? Would it be bigger than our planet Earth? Or would it be just as small as, let's just say, Mars? So let's actually find out in this video, and we're going to do this uh, really, really simply. We're going to go into a new simulation here. And what I wanted to do is um, start by combining all of the moons of Jupiter, for example. So we're going to place Jupiter right here. Uh, maybe decrease time just a little bit so it spins a little bit slower. And there's this new action button that appeared in one of the newer versions of Universe Sandbox that allows us to add the moons to the planet. So this actually adds all of the moons at once. There they all are. Now the thing is we're actually going to remove Jupiter now, because we don't need it technically, and go under powers, um, stop all of the velocity, so all of these objects basically freeze in space, and maybe even um, shrink the system just a little bit so that it's uh, it starts combining into one major object a little bit faster. So now we're going to uh, zoom into the largest moon in our solar system, which is of course Ganymede, and basically watch its mass um, increase. We're going to maybe select this graph. So currently the mass is 2.02 masses of the moon. Basically it's two times as massive as our moon and obviously a little bit larger. Uh, this actually uh, is also uh, a little bit larger than the smallest planet, the Mercury. So if I were to place Mercury here, it would actually be a little bit smaller than Ganymede. But it, it is a little bit more massive. It's um, twice as massive as Ganymede. So let's see what happens. So the first collision we're going to see is going to be Io, the closest um, moon of Jupiter. And we're just going to observe these collisions in real time and see the total mass combined right here. So maybe increase time a little bit. Let's uh, see how many collisions we'll get here and uh, try to combine all of these objects into one. And so here come the major collisions from Europa and Callisto will be next. So these are the Galilean moons. These are the four largest satellites of Jupiter and they're basically now combined into one major supermoon known as Ganymede, but we might as well rename this into something more appropriate like the moons of... The moons of solar systems. So there we go. That's going to be the name of this particular object. Uh, let's actually just combine everything into one. Make sure that everything is already in here. There's a bunch of moons we actually uh, didn't add yet. And there they come. And there we go. So these are tiny ones. They don't actually add very much to our mass. But the total mass so far is 5.35 masses of the moon. So I think this is it. There's no nothing else left here. Uh, this is just Ganymede. All right, so let's do the same with other objects, uh, with other moons of other planets, starting with Saturn. 
And so here come the moons of Saturn. There's like 57-ish of them. They're going to start colliding into this one major supermoon. I'm going to try to actually shrink the system just so it happens a little bit faster uh, and possibly also decrease velocities here just so that they don't actually fly away from us. And all right, so let's see what happens. There's going to be a collision with Rhea, with um, Iapetus, Tethys, and Titan and Dione. These are the biggest um, moons of Saturn. And here they come, all in one. Titan is the biggest, creates the biggest boom. And you can already see that this has increased to about 7.26 masses of the moon. So it's about 7.3 times more massive than our actual moon uh, that orbits around our planet Earth. And look at that, liquid ocean. That's because the actual moon got warmed up enough to, to basically become a water world. All right, looks like we've added everything from Saturn. So this is in total of over um, 110, 120 moons all in one, basically. Names of which we still don't know and probably will never know. It'd be really, really hard to remember them. And look at that. We even have a little continent here. This is pretty cool. There's at least one continent that was formed and even, oh, even two continents that were formed from all of the collisions. And that's because here um, the water levels have actually been decreased. And this is actually now mostly silicate and iron um, object, which would technically qualify as a planet if it was orbiting in a very specific orbit. But we're not done yet. So let's go to the next object, which is going to be um, Uranus. And all of the moons of Uranus are named after Shakespearean characters. And we're going to add all of them here as well. So here we go. Let's shrink the system a little bit more and start colliding those larger objects that you see coming in. So these are objects known as Titania, Oberon, Umbriel, Ariel, Miranda. All of these are Shakespearean characters I am not very familiar with because I am not an English teacher. Neither have I actually read um, Shakespeare <laughs> for a very long time. Truth comes out. I don't really read Shakespeare. I don't think anyone actually reads Shakespeare. I don't even know why I still have Shakespeare at schools. There's so many other books that are much, much better, at least in my opinion. Anyway, let's uh, add everything into one major moon and check out the total mass after all of the moons from Uranus combine into moons of solar system that we have here. And the, the answer to that is, well, it actually hasn't increased by much. It's only about 7.4 masses of the moon. So moons of Uranus are not actually very massive. Well, neither are the moons of Neptune. So I'm going to add Neptune here and do the same thing. And so here come the collisions from Neptunian uh, moons as well. And the biggest one here is Triton, which is, um, well, it's not as massive, actually. It's only, in terms of the moon sizes, it's only about 30% uh, of the mass of the moon. But it is going to create a very nice collision. And there we go. And I believe this is almost it. So now we only have three more moons left to add. And we're going to actually ignore Pluto because it's not technically a planet. And so Charon, which is the moon of Pluto, is not going to go in here. But we are going to add three more moons. We're going to add two moons from Mars, which are Deimos, which is going to be right uh, here. We're going to just place it next to this object. And Phobos. These are very, very tiny and are basically going to do absolutely nothing in terms of adding the mass because they're just little asteroids. Well, they're not very large. But we still have one more, and that's, of course, our own moon. We're going to add our own moon, and we're actually going to first uh, maybe put it right here in orbit, just so we can actually see how big our own moon actually is in comparison to uh, this object you see right here. Oh, and it's already sort of combining um, with the, the total moon um, mass simply because of the so-called... Uh, Roche limit that is going through here. It's basically in the region of space where it's going to start creating the asteroid belt. So we might as well just go in here and once again hold all velocities and make it just collide with this object, creating the absolute total mass of them all of the moons from our solar system in one little, or I guess one large rock with water on it. And interestingly, this actually looks very planetary to me. This actually does resemble some sort of a planet. Okay, well, let's actually wait for it to cool down from all of these collisions, and let's see if there's any continents that are going to surface. But so what do we have here? We have total mass of about 8.67 masses of the moon, which is actually over twice as massive as the smallest planet, Mercury. So Mercury is a lot smaller than this object. 
In comparison to Mars, interestingly, this is actually almost the same mass as Mars, but for some reason it's larger, and I'm guessing it's because it actually has uh, more silicates than iron, so it is a little bit less dense. The density here is a little bit lower than Mars. So what we've created here is essentially a Mars-like object. It's very similar to Mars, except, of course, for the fact that it does have um, a lot more water, liquid water at least, and uh, a lot less iron on the inside. So if I were to place Mars in a binary orbit with this object, you'd see how similar they are. So let's just place it somewhere right here. There we go. They're, they're not going to be orbiting around one another. And they have a relatively similar mass, so they're basically right... Uh, their very center is right in the center here, right in, in the middle of the circle. And so the only difference is the size, and that's because of the density here being only 2 grams per centimeter cube, and density here being twice as much, twice as high. So if I were to change this to 4, it would be very Martian-like, very Mars-like in terms of both size, mass, and possibly even appearance if we wait long enough. But it does seem to have a little bit more water. The water here is at 1.13%. And so essentially, this is what we've been able to create. We've created a very uh, planetary-like body out of all of the moons in our solar system that's, uh, you know, Martian in size and appearance, uh, has somewhat similar characteristics to Mars, but obviously a lot more water. So this would be a water world because of all of those moons that we've added that actually have a lot of liquid on the inside, like, for example... Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, and um, Enceladus. So all of these moons added quite a lot of uh, liquid water. And there's also possibly going to be quite a lot of atmosphere, and depending on where we locate this uh, particular object, depending on where it's located in the solar system, it would very likely become um, a somewhat terrestrial world, and might even have liquid water, as you can see right now. But, of course, since it doesn't have that much iron on the inside, and since it probably doesn't really have any kind of um, liquid molten core that sort of circulates around, um, it would probably not have a lot of magnetic field, magnetosphere. So, living on this particular object would still be kind of sort of dangerous. Nevertheless, though, this is a pretty cool object, and now I hope this answered your question of what happens if you combine all of the moons of our solar system into one big mega supermoon. So, let's just call it that. Mega big super moon. So that's it. And let's uh, actually maybe take this object and collide with our planet Earth because I tend to like finishing uh, these videos by essentially destroying our Earth. So here's Earth. We're going to place it right around over here. Uh, it's going to actually not orbit around this object. We're going to hold all velocities once again and slow down time and watch uh, the magic occur as this mega big supermoon collides with our beautiful blue planet Earth. And let's find out what, uh, what region of Earth it actually hits. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because everything on Earth is about to be completely annihilated. You know, sometimes I'm not sure if uh, maybe I have a problem because I kept destroying Earth over and over in a lot of my videos. But you know what? This is what this game is for, right? It's to relieve your fantasies of destruction of planets and stars and so on. And look at how this suddenly started smoking. That's because of the tidal heat generated by our planet Earth. And there comes the super large collision of Earth and all of the moons of our solar system all in one. This is going to be very, very beautiful and dramatically explosive. And I think this here used to be a continent. Now it's not. I think I've just destroyed everything on our planet and it's about to be at, get really, really hot as well in a few minutes. If I accelerate time here, it's going to change completely. And it looks like this is what I've created after this collision. There's basically one continent right here and another one uh, right around here. And this is essentially the highest points on our planet, the Himalayas and the Andes. These are basically the only pieces of land that remain on, on this new water world Earth. Yeah, this was fun. I like it. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching these videos, and don't forget to come back tomorrow and check out another educational video that will teach you something awesome. I'll see you tomorrow, game you later, bye bye.